was a very avid reader from the time I was six, really. And um, uh, my mother got me a library card when I was six because the uh, teacher told her it was a good idea. I had an endless, bottomless appetite for reading. In the summer I was 14, I read The Wanderers. I think it was a game changer all the way. Uh, it was the first time I read a book where I recognized the people in it. You know, it wasn't just like reading, you know, about Gatsby or Encyclopedia Brown or The Three Musketeers or, or what have you. This was, oh, I know these people. I've grown up around people like this. I know that guy who brutalizes his wife. I know that kid who, whose dreams are too big for his economic circumstances. I know that world. And, and suddenly it was like, oh, I can do this. If he can do it, I can do it. It's a David Mamet line, uh, what one man can do, another man can do. It's that moment when you realize, well, if somebody can write about that world and they seem to come from the world I come from, then I can write about it, I can do this. It's okay. As America grows more and more homogenized, in my opinion, Boston still retains this kind of, you know, for good and ill, this unique characteristic to it. I was born in very interesting times. I was born at the exact moment the 20th century caught up with it and it exploded. And, and all the, the things that were buried underneath it, very ugly things in some ways, came up. And it also put me in a place where the way I looked at the world uh, became shaped very much by a situation in which almost every single side was understandable and almost every single side was right and almost every single side was wrong. And that was an amazing thing to see at a very young age, I was nine, when, um, when sort of they, they federally desegregated the Boston Public Schools. And there's, it tore the neighborhoods to shreds. Black kids would be bussed into white neighborhoods and they would throw rocks at them. And white kids would wander into black neighborhoods and they would throw rocks at them. Rocks became like the big symbol. And so it was like, why are we throwing rocks at each, and bottles at each other and Molotov cocktails and all this, this madness? I don't think we're the enemy. I think the enemy is the people who, who are shaping our destiny right here, who are defining this. And, but you can't fight them. So you fight each other. And it gave me, I remember having my very first adult thought when I was about 10 or 11. And I remember thinking, I truly thinking, I don't know if I was this articulate in the thought, but it is in the best interest of the ruling class to keep the working class fighting amongst itself. I didn't know how to write a novel. I was a short story writer. I fluked into writing a novel. And then I said, I don't know how I did that. And I don't know how to do that. So I do know that if I stay in this genre of the private eye novel, that I can teach myself. Because I understand what has to happen in a private eye mystery. So I'm gonna teach myself how to write a novel so I can ultimately write the novel I really wanna write because I'd had the idea for Mystic River by that point, but I knew I wasn't a good enough writer yet to write it. And so I said, teach yourself a new thing with each one of these private eye novels. And I did, I would set myself a new challenge with each of the books. And then when I finished the fifth, I said, I'm, I can do this now. I can, I, let me take a run at this other one. And I took a run at it and, I, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> it was awful <laughs> to write that book, it was terrible. And then after two and a half years, I finished it. And I remember standing over it, I'd had it on a table in this back deck where I was living. And I looked at it and I, all right, I got, I did it. I did it, that was it. That was the ambition ultimately was to produce, I think that book. It's the sum total of everything I knew about the world I grew up in. It really is, it's, it, I poured everything into it. There are incidences in that book. It's very rare that I write from an autobiographical place, uh, but every now and then there'll be a specific detail that you go, oh yeah, that, I remember when that happened, or I remember when that happened, then I take it someplace else. Mystic River's got a lot of those, particularly from my childhood. The first 50 pages of Mystic River are probably the most personal thing I've ever written. And it's also very much my, my ultimate love letter to the city. I can't stand writers who talk about how tough this job is, because I knew a lot of people who had really tough jobs, like my father worked at Sears and Roebuck for 35 years, and I'm pretty sure the bloom came off that rose around week two, but he did it to put food on the table. So I don't, when I say writing's hard, I don't say it as play me a violin. I say it as it should be hard. And it still beats the hell out of most jobs in the world. In fact, in my opinion, it beats the hell out of any job in the world, and I still can't believe I'm being paid for it. But it should be very hard if you're doing it well. 
and people who don't accept that should just go home.